Hello, welcome to week six. Um, we're talking today about uh, 3D uh, stock objects, walls, doors, uh, stages, um, and using some of those Vectorworks libraries. Um, and in the next video, we'll talk about rendering and making those look a little bit nicer. Um, so I'm going to start off, uh, we're going to look at some, some tool sets. Um, so a lot of these things are over in the tool sets menu. Um, so we're going to start, we're going to make a little mini event space today. Um, so we're going to start by going to this little house. And in here you're going to see a whole bunch of different things, parking spaces, ramps, stairs, uh, windows, doors, um, you know, these sorts of things. Um, we're going to start with a wall. You can also do a round wall if you want, but we're going to start with a wall. I'm going to make a fairly large room here. Um, over here on the top, just like a line or double line tool, um, you can choose which way um, these dots represent where in the point of the wall you're clicking. So right now, uh, this is where those lines are. So it's on the inside of the wall is where I'm clicking. So I'm going to start here. And I'm going to use the tab button to define the length of the wall because I want to make sure that everything is consistent. So I'm going to go 60 feet um, with this. Actually, I'm going to go 70 feet with this. Uh, make a nice big, nice big room. And if I click, then I can build the next part of my wall. And this one, I'm going to go 60 feet. All right, right there. And then uh, I did 70 feet on the other side, so I'm going to do 70 feet. I'm just using the tab button to define that length. And then here, if I click, it'll automatically uh, join the wall together. So now I have a nice wall here in 3D. So we're going to use the flyover tool is what I'm using. It's this, this button over here. Um, the flyover tool and I can actually see this view. Now, you'll notice right now, there's not really any 3D shape, or there's you just see the 3D shape, you don't see any sort of actual rendering happening. That's because the default is wireframe mode, um, which basically just shows the outline of objects. If you wanna see the object colors, you can hit, um, there's different rendering options here. The main reason why wireframe is the um, primary one uh, that Vectorworks uses to just look around is because it takes up a lot less computing power. So if you're going to have a lot, you're just going to take up a lot more power um, when you're uh, when you're working on something. Uh, if you have it in like a, a final quality render works, which is like the nicest sort of, it makes a nice little um, rendering. But OpenGL gets you close enough to what you want. Um, just to sort of see that the shape is, is solid in the right place and the color is approximate. But if you want to see, um, you know, final quality is as far as I usually go. Um, but you see that takes kind of a minute to, uh, to load through. Um, but it takes, it takes a second or a little bit. So this isn't too bad with just a single wall, but you can imagine like if you get a, a bunch of uh, a large set or something that's sort of complex, um, it can really bog down your computer because um, it's taking uh, about half a second just in um, just in a single wall. So I'm gonna put it back in wireframe mode. So we have our uh, our wall here, um, and there's things that we can do to um, to change things. I'm actually go back to this here. Um, so notice how when I select a wall, it doesn't select the whole room. It only selects the section of wall that's sort of continuous before the next turn. So if I adjust anything, it's only going to affect this section of the wall. If I want to affect more parts, I should hit the shift key and um, highlight other parts of the wall. Um, so if I want to multiple, uh, do multiple parts of the wall, I hit shift and then click the parts that I want to control. Um, so I'm going to do this back wall here, and I'm going to make this um, over in the object info palette. I'm going to make this height of 20 feet. So now that wall is 20 feet tall. Um, you can also adjust the wall thickness. Make that a foot. Um, and then we'll get into the rendering part, but you can also do that from the object info palette as well. So I have my little event space here, that um, this room. Um, so what else do we need? Well, we probably need some way to get into the room, right? We probably want a door or something. So I'm going to open up, uh, here's a door tool, and here's the window tool. 
So windows, we probably won't use too much of unless you're doing building a set of some sort. Um, but it's good to know the window tool exists, so we'll show that as well. But here's here's the door tool. And I'm just going to put a door in the back of my back of my space. You can choose which direction it opens by clicking around. You know, by just I'm not clicking anything. I'm just sort of going around. Anyway, so here's here's the door, and you can. Change the door settings. Right now, it's just a standard opening in the wall. Okay, but if I hit the door, I can go into settings, and I have a whole bunch of options here as to um, as to the height of the door, the width of the door, um, the size of reference refers to like is it if it has multiple leaf. Um, configuration is one of the more important ones. Um, so you have like pocket by part, overhead door, barn door. So this shows the you know top top and, and detail. Um, probably the one that we're going to use the most is swing by part. That's sort of like the classic event um, space door. And again, because we're leaf size, we've said unit size, and this would make this a bit smaller. But if we leaf size, and that's, you know, how we're going to do that. Um, can offset in the wall if you need to, um, and you can also adjust the top shape. So if you wanted to have round or you know curved or some sort of fun, fun thing, you can adjust these to get really specific if you if you want. I'm going to go with the standard square door though. So if I hit OK, and there's a whole bunch of other options here, you can you can go through and sort of play with these um, and see what they do. But there's a whole bunch. Of ways to make your doors um, customizable, so feel free to play with those. Um, so I made the door by part. So now in my rendering, I have by part door, and this just automatically um, joins to the wall, right? So now it's part of it's part of the wall. Um, same idea with windows. Um, I'm going to put a window in, even though you probably wouldn't put one in an event space, but. Um, same idea with Windows. If you go in the Object Info Palette, hit Settings. Um, same idea. You can change the top shape. Um, you can change the you know um, the type of casement. So there's a lot of options here. You you can customize a lot of these. You can make your own versions of this, but. Um, for our purposes, you can just use the base ones, and um, you know there's there's enough here to sort of get your ideas across, um, you know, without getting too too picky. So I'm just gonna make that my window over in the corner there. Um, again, you don't have to make a window in yours. I was just just doing that for a demonstration. Um, so here's here's the uh, the room. Uh, so this room probably we want a stage, right? So let's see here. Um, do uh, over in the tool set palette, we're going to go to the uh, that's that's that. Yeah. So, this little light here is going to have the um, basically the event tools. So, we have a whole bunch of things in here we have truss and lighting instruments and pipes and things. Uh, we're going to start with the stage deck. Now, the beautiful thing about the stage deck is that it actually comes automatically in a four by eight panel. So this is useful if you're trying to make something where you have to show um, a stage layout, like how you'd actually lay out the stage um, or how the um, uh, carpenter should lay out the stage. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going I'm to set this as a single thing. And then over here in the object info palette, I'm just going to make it, I don't know, just the height. I'm going to just the depth to, uh, let's say, 30 feet and the width to, say, 40 feet. And then I'm actually going to make a line through. See, here's here's the center guiding point in the page center, which actually isn't the center of the room. So I, what I should do is I'm going to do um, a line from here to here, and this will give me a center point of, of the line. And then I'm just going to line up with that, which while I'm at it, might as well line this up with the center of the room, center of the page. no real reason to do that other than I just like to make sure it looks nice. So there you go. Stage is center. I'm going to use the shift uh, key and the arrow keys to nudge this down a little bit. 
All right, and there's there's our stage. It's pretty deep. I might decide. I think I'm gonna make that a little bit less deep. So maybe 20 feet, um, 25 feet. Let's put the difference. There we go. 25 foot stage. So now, if we go into the fiber tool, you can see we have a stage. All right, so we have a stage, that's nice. Um, probably need a way to get onto the stage, right? It's four feet tall. So that's why we have the handy dandy stage steps, which you just click where you want it to go on the stage and then line it up, go up the side, and now you have stage steps. Now, this has the same sort of thing as the other stuff. There's a lot of different uh, tools here for adjusting the height. Uh, this is the stage height that it's adjusting to, so you want that to be the same as whatever your stage is. Step unit height, uh, swinger length, you know, with all that sort of stuff. Number of steps, um, the thickness of said steps. So you can you can adjust a lot of this, um, and you can also update. Um, you, know, you, you can update different things, but you also should add a railing or something to, to this, um, which there are settings for in here as well. Um, I also want to know, I'm not worrying too much about making everything in nice classes and layers. You should, uh, as you're going through your document, this is just for demo to show you um, how this all works. So just, just know it's making some automatic classes for things as I go along, but um, you'll want to sort of make sure that everything's classified the right way. So the other thing that I'm going to do is um, I think, you know, the stage looks okay. I'm going to render this in OpenGL. I think the stage looks okay with that nice wall behind it. Like, it's not too bad, but I think I'm going to put a curtain up. So uh, over here in the soft goods, I'm going to hit soft goods, and I'm just going to draw a line behind the stage, just right up stage. And I clicked once, and now it wants me to go. So I could do this, and I could make, like, multiple... Um, Kind of like the polygon tool, I can just like click and keep going and make different things. If I want to end it, I just click again at the end of the line. And now I have a curtain. Now this curtain is going to be probably just inside the stage here, right? It's like a little bit inside the stage. So I'm going to go back to the 2D. I don't want to back up right now. 2D plan and I'm just going to use the nudge tool again right shift and an arrow key to nudge this curtain just behind the stage and then same idea I think this one you know you can choose different ones curtain border um, pipe and drape um, you know these are these are options um, but uh, I think what I'm gonna do is pipe and drape since we are doing this as floor based And if I do OpenGL, now I have pipe and drape. Cool. So what else do we need? Well, we probably want to do, um, we probably want to put some stuff on our stage, right? So you'll have your modeled objects that you can put on, on your stage. But um, I'm going to go in and I'm also going to get um, a chair for a speaker to talk at this. So this we're going to go into the resource manager. Okay, so we're going to go into the resource manager, which is Palette's resource manager. And I had some lighting instruments in here because that's uh, for another project that I'm working on. But the brilliant thing about this is that you have a whole library of tools here. I also have service select libraries, but those those usually don't have access to. Um, in here that you can use. And there's also a search feature. So I'm just gonna write in chair. So for an event, you want something that's comfortable, but probably easy enough for someone to sit up and, and talk in that's kind of sturdy. Um, so for right now, I'm just gonna pick uh, this chair. It looks, you know, this is not too stylish, but it's gonna be what it is. And I just double clicked that. And on my 2D plan, I'm gonna select, okay, I think it should go right here. And then I'm going to make it so it faces towards the audience. Now, all fine and good, right? Well, the problem is this chair is now inside of your stage. What to do? Well, if you look over in the object info palette, you can see that the Z height is zero feet and zero inches. Um, our stage deck is four feet. So if we adjust the Z height to four feet, now your chair is on the stage. So there's a lot of different things you can play from in here. You can um, uh, 
Um, there's chairs, but you could also do like a plant if you wanted to have a plant of some sort. So here's, you know, classic office fern. And same thing, I'm gonna go in the 2D plan to place it so I have good control. I'll place this plant here. And again, plants in the stage. So Z height, four feet. Okay, so this is kind of a nice um, nice way to do this. And then you have OpenGL. So now you have a nice little stage, right? So the only thing that really is missing now, um, besides you know backstage entrances, and maybe you want to do a little bit more masking, maybe you want to do a curtain around the front of the stage, um, you know, make it make it look nice. Um, but we're gonna forego that for for the uh, sake of making this video shorter. Um, is an audience. So the way we're gonna make an audience is I'm actually gonna go into the rectangle tool. I'm gonna tap here and here and here. I'm just gonna make a large box. And then I'm gonna go into, uh, it is under this drawer here. And I'm gonna hit seating section. And this creates the seating section tool. And if I hit this, Now it opens up this box and I can choose which type of seats I want. I can have wooden seats or vent seats, bleacher seats, and all these have different um, sizes built in, but you can also adjust row spacing, seat spacing, um, distance past boundaries is actually that, that box that I drew. Um, and this will give you, a, you know, it shows it with symbols or like this will just show you like how many seats you're actually able to get in this configuration. If I hit this, now I have seats in my space. Oop, I didn't mean to do that. Um, so now if I hit OpenGL, now I have a nice little event space all ready for um, for my nice sculpture models to be uh, presented. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put your little uh, sculpture models in your event space, in whatever form you think um, you think works best. Um, so that's what I have for this video. Um, next, I'm gonna be showing you how to render um, objects and change your wall textures and that sort of thing. Um, so we'll do that on the next video.